So a very warm welcome back to the channel guys and today I want to talk a little bit about my DSLR, my camera. Why am I not shooting with a mirrorless camera? It's a question that I get so much. Before we get into any of that though, look where I am today. It is, again, I've been saying this too much recently, it's freezing. Literally today though, literally. We've got this beautiful river here um, that in, in areas is completely frozen over and it looks amazing. So I'm going to see if I think there's a bit of a public footpath over this field and hopefully we can get down to the shores of this little river here and try and get the first shot of the day. So before we talk about cameras or anything, we have to grab a couple of shots here, guys. Look at that. What a selection of ice for us to work with. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. I think this is just quite uncommon, you know, at least from my experience, where we've pretty much, except from that side over there, we've pretty much just got a whole river that's iced over here. I certainly haven't got any photographs myself um, of any sort of iced over rivers. So I've definitely wanted to make the most of this here. So, I've decided on a shot looking back this way, towards this bridge. We've got a few, sort of a uh, nice pleasant scattering of trees, let's say, in the background. And um, what I really want this image to, to be about is probably quite obvious, is the ice down here that's surrounding all these rocks. And honestly, look at it. Look how beautiful all these patterns are. And the curves just naturally lead us down into that bridge. And yeah, honestly, really, really big fan of this. So, I think it's going to be a decent little image. Um, the only thing I'd say I've been struggle, struggling with before I grab the photograph is the rocks themselves. I've just been trying to find a way to make sure that it's not too cluttered down there in the foreground, you know. I've been trying to make a little bit of order in the chaos, um, give the rocks a little bit of breathing room down in the foreground and just make, make the overall photograph feel a little bit more pleasing rather than just shoving my camera there and grabbing a load of rocks in the foreground without any, any thought, you know. So I'm shooting with the 16 to 35 millimeter lens you can see there. We're zoomed in at about 28 mil, and that is so that I can start the image here. Though that little section of rocks you can see there, that's going to be the anchor point for this photograph. That's where it's going to start. And it just sort of neatens it up a little bit in the foreground, like I said. So there we go. Um, so ISO 100, 1 60th of a second, and F8. I'm going to focus on those rocks down there in the foreground. There we go, lovely. Um, and then, yeah, like I say, I don't want to do that and introduce all these rocks down here. I want to lift the composition up ever so slightly. So we've got this nice section of ice down here and then we've got a little bit of a gap until we get to those rocks. And yeah, for me, that's just a lot more pleasing, you know. And then all it is then is just a case of framing it up. F8, ISO 100, 1 60th. Bosh, there's your dinner. So hopefully that one's come out nice. And yeah, that is just, honestly, what a scene. So I want to grab another shot here before I move on. And if you look there, looking upstream, just as nice. So this particular image, guys, is not really going to need too much explaining, to be honest. It's going to be very similar to the last photograph in general and definitely you know, pretty much exactly the same concept. I want to make the most of this ice down here in the foreground. We've got another nice scattering of trees and the river just sort of leads off nicely into the background. The only thing that I'm going to do differently is shoot this one in a landscape orientation. Um, but apart from that, pretty much the same. Whoa, we've got a low battery. I've got another battery in my bag, guys. Do not worry. <laughs> uh, so let's just get the exposure meter up. I'd say the light's probably a bit different here. Um, keep that at 140th, that'll be fine. And see, I'm still using the rule of thirds here at the top. You know, I'm using that sort of horizon line, if we can even call it that. We don't need loads of the sky in like that. It's not particularly interesting. It's quite overcast. And really, that's that's enough. You know, that's enough. So I'm going to zoom about one third of the way in. There we go. Lock the focus in. Again, as well, we've got an, we're going to have it really sharp down here where the ice is. And that is the story of this photograph. Lovely and simple. I tell you what, just looking on the back of my camera now, I love that one tree that's leaning into the river 
from left to right that's really cool so that's it let's grab this one now let's check my histogram perfect histogram another absolute stunner um I thought, what a start so where i want to go today to my um particular subject which is going to be really cool i think you're going to love it is actually back that way so let's crack on and of course uh, we'll talk a little bit about my DSLR, why I'm choosing to shoot with the Nikon D7200 still, uh, why I'm not upgrading into a mirrorless, especially when you know I'm in a position where I can uh, financially, let's say. So I think you'll find it pretty interesting and it's something that I've been wanting to talk about for a little while now. So let's crack on. In that red car there. How nice is that? Absolute corker. So I'm en route. I'm en route to this this subject. It's um it's kind of like a reservoir, but then this really cool uh, weir, which is like a sort of man-made waterfall for anyone that doesn't know. And I've wanted to photograph it for ages, so I'm well excited. Now. Let's talk a little bit about my Nikon. Uh, not not specifically my my D7200, just kind of DSLRs in general, I suppose. Why am I not shooting mirrorless? Now, there's two reasons why I want to talk about this. Is firstly, is because I uh, people ask me all the time. They say, why do you shoot with a crop sensor? Why do you not have a mirrorless? Why don't you try the Nikon Z7? All of this, and um, I just feel like if I make a video about it, it'll be good <laughs> for everybody. Um, Secondly, is because I know a lot of people watch this channel um, are beginners or, you know, they enjoy going out with the cameras and they're not really that into gear, you know. Um, so, to, to answer the question, really, the reason why I'm not shooting with mirrorless yet or anything is, is because I don't need to. <laughs> and I really wanted to make this video as well to kind of pass that on to other people that might really feel like they need to upgrade their, ca their cameras. Like, And I, I feel like... Um, this is all like a little bit of a cliche in the world of landscape photography, especially here on YouTube. But for me, that's, you know, no reason. Wow, look how beautiful this is, by the way, as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Rivers galore, iced over rivers galore. Um, but yeah, I just feel like that, that that's not a reason not to mention it. And, and for me, the biggest worry that I have is that people watch my channel or any channel or read something and they feel like they need to upgrade their camera they need to get the latest mirrorless to the point where they might feel inadequate with the gear that they've got and that upsets me a little bit you know it makes me feel sad um because like i said before i could afford to buy a mirrorless i'm in a very privileged a very lucky position i could just about afford one if i really wanted to and i keep thinking like well maybe i should i do this full time i should get a the top of the range camera and i probably will one day like let's face it but for me it really comes down to like Two things really I think accepting that for, for the vast majority of people myself included is that it's very much a want rather than a need you know what do you really need it for and you know there's always that risk of getting caught up in that 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 marketing and that consumerist side of things where you know if I go out tomorrow and get a Nikon Z6 it'll be great for a while but then no doubt in a few months time I'll, I'll, I'll want a Nikon Z7 Mark II and then I'll get that and something new will be out and it's just excuse me it's just never ending <laughs> um, so yeah I think at this stage or in this day and age all cameras are just class aren't they and um, as well secondly I think ultimately this is what it's about isn't it doing it being out it doesn't matter what you've got it doesn't matter if you've just got a phone in your pocket it does not matter because I mean that's what it's like for me as well and I think that's another thing that's become a huge cliche but only because it's so ridiculously true like um, I think if you can afford a new camera just get it why not you know if some, someone said to me you know oh I'm uh, I've got a Nikon Z7 here mate Mark II would you like it I'd say yep and you'd never see me with my DSLR again <laughs> but I think that's just properly besides the point and yeah, like I said, I just really wanted to make this video or at least have this, this little bit of a chat to try and reinforce that to anybody that might be struggling um, 
sort of mentally with the gear that they've got and they, they might really feel like I don't know like it's in uh, it, the, they feel like their photography is inadequate let's say and uh, yeah like I said that really just gets me down a little bit you know because I know a lot of beginners watch these videos and stuff and um, I wouldn't want that to be the case <laughs> um, right what a woodland as well and we're getting you've probably seen from my face a few glimpses of sun every now and again I don't know if I mentioned before but it is actually forecast snow <laughs> this evening uh, and that's kind of why I've come out um, a bit of a a, a, a a small potential of snow not definite this is amazing what a spot right enough yapping let's crack on and see if there's anything else to photograph We have arrived. Get a look at that in the background. How cool is that? So, um, I think I said before, as soon as I found out this thing was quite local, quite close to home, I've wanted to come here for ages and photograph it with my camera. Now, it's gonna be quite tricky because of course, I haven't got a tripod. One thing that's cool is, look at it there, the water's almost got this kind of like long exposure effect anyway. So I'm not too bothered about, whoa, it's windy. I'm not too bothered about not having a tripod or filters or anything like that but it's still going to be quite difficult to photograph so I'll get the camera out now, the, the DSLR and uh, I'll explain to you what I'm going to be doing here because it's going to be a little bit weird Alright, so there we go guys, we are ready and waiting with the camera um, now this is going to be a little bit of a, a weird shot, it's going to be a little bit tricky just because we haven't got a wide angle lens, it's, it's, it's a lot bigger <laughs> than I thought to be honest the weir from left to right um, so my Takina 11mm would have been ideal or I would have liked to have used a tripod to be able to do a panel. Now we've got neither of them so I've got two options. I could go further back to get a wider field of view by you know literally moving my feet but then we've got these kind of little shrubs here that are just going to impede the view of the weir which is a little bit unfortunate so it leaves me with the only option a handheld panorama but I don't mind it's going to be a little bit of a challenge but we do not shy away from a challenge on this on this channel do we guys so um it could all go to pot famous last words but i'm going to give it a go um so it's probably going to be about five or six shots i'm going to start there sweep all the way across nice and simple just to this side of the weir now you'll hopefully be able to see the sky there it's quite a lot of texture in comparison to when i was photographing at the start of the video so i really want to make sure that i don't overexpose so i'll show you how i do this um, but first things first i'm going to get the focus locked in um, I'm just going to focus on the weir there, there we go, that's fantastic, so that's perfect, focus is locked in. Now next up, I'm going to get the exposure meter up here, I mean, if I'm being honest, we could do with a mirrorless camera here guys, so we've got a live histogram, <laughs> absolute Henry the hypocrite over here, but uh, now the exposure meter is going to work absolutely fine, uh, and I've got the settings locked in, ISO 100, F8 and 140th of a second, as with any panel, you know, you want everything in manual so it's consistent across the five or six photographs or however many you're taking. So I'm not taking any shots yet, but I'm going to pan across and keep my eye on the exposure meter and just really make sure that it's not going to overexpose anywhere because I do want to retain the detail in that sky. Um, so I'm going to put it to, let's go for 130th of a second and that's fine. We can lift the shadows, but we cannot bring down them highlights if we overexpose. Uh, so I'm going to get the electronic level up which is um, the last thing that I need to do before I do this I feel a bit nervous for some reason <laughs> I feel a bit nervous what's going on now when I last did a handheld panel just before we do it a couple of you guys suggested that I do it a different way when I last did it I panned across like this you know like you do when you're using a phone um, and it worked fine but the point was, uh, from these, I think it was a couple of years, so thank you so much for the su suggestion, I really appreciate it, and I'm going to give it a go now. Their point was that when you use um, a tripod and you're panning, say for example when you've got your ball head, you kind of swivel it like this, don't you? You're not panning like this and moving your upper body, you're just swiveling it. And I think that makes complete sense, so again, thank you so much. And I think it's, 
you know, it's all about giving your post-processing software the best opportunity to be able to stitch it together, especially when you're shooting it handheld. So, we'll give that a go now without any further ado, and we'll start there. And I'm going to use the electronic level to the best of my ability to try and make sure it's nice and level. So, let's crack on. There's shot number one. Shot number two. Shot number three. So it's looking quite dark, but I trust this camera, um, you know, that I can bring up the, them shadows. Just going to do one more. And hopefully that's up on your screen now. Absolutely lovely. So it's a tricky one, it is, but again, I've done a few of these recently, handheld without a tripod, and they've come out absolutely fine. So I'm feeling fairly confident. I shouldn't be saying this, but I feel fairly confident that that's come out all right. Ah, wonderful. So, uh, one thing I wanted to mention actually before I leave is uh, my ebook on composition. I wrote this as a comment in my last video. I never talk about it. It's something that I'm really proud of. I've had wonderful feedback from it, and uh, a lot of people have found it really helpful. So, if you'd like some help on composition, it's really reasonably priced, and like I said, I'm really proud of it. Um, I'll stick a link up in the corner here and one down in the video description if you want to go and check that out. And any purchases really support what I do as well, so thank you so much. Um, I'm going home. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. And um, yeah, like cameras, I think ultimately my point is just um, don't let it take over. I think buying a new camera, whether it whether or not it's mirrorless, is a wonderful thing. And um, it can really help to drive you outdoors with you know, your new toy. It's like buying a new car, isn't it? You just want to drive it all the time. Um, and I think that's definitely a positive, but just balance, try not to let it take over and remember what is important. Being outdoors and witnessing this. How cool is that? Look at it. Look at it, I'll move my noggin out of the way. Just the whole reservoir is frozen over, so cool. But yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to check out my ebook, that'll be class. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Whoa, cup of tea, out. Mm -hmm.